So again, thank you so much, um, Les, for um, inviting me to share with you about some of the work that the Office of Housing is doing um, to expand access to housing. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes and take this opportunity to share with those of you who are not familiar with my office, some of the work that we're doing and, and who we are. Um, so the Office of Housing is responsible for the planning administration and the operation of all the County of Hawaii housing programs. So for the most part, that's funding programs. And our mission is to provide for the development of viable communities through decent housing, suitable living environments and expanded uh, economic opportunities. Um, the office is comprised of five uh, divisions. Um, the existing housing division runs all of the section eight programs. Um, it includes housing choice voucher, emergency housing vouchers, VASH vouchers, foster youth vouchers. You know, the HUD has come out um, in the last few years with these kind of specialized voucher programs. So the county does run all of those programs. Uh, the second division is our grants division. And through this division, uh, we manage a lot of the HUD funding that comes through the county community development block grant, um, home investment partnership, housing trust fund. Um, so if you are familiar, CDBG comes through our office annually for about $2.6 million. Um, home and HTF or housing trust fund comes once every three years because the state rotates this allocation of funds with Maui and Kauai and the Big Island. So this coming year, we will see those two particular grants. I believe HOME will see mm, almost two, $3 million, Housing Trust Fund, maybe about $2 million. Um, so there, there, there'll be some funding coming through the office for housing related um, activities. This particular uh, division also administers the newly uh, appropriated housing production fund. And when we kind of did our break breakout groups, I was mentioning this to the group. I didn't really focus on this particular program in this PowerPoint, but I will tell you right now that the um, housing production fund, uh, we, we are seeing $9 million this year, and we are anticipating about the same allocation of funds for next fiscal year, 23-24. In May, next month, we will be going out to RFP for these two pots of money. So you will see close to, I would say between 13 and $18 million um, in, in awards. Um, a lot of what we were discussing in our breakout group was the need for acquiring housing units. Um, and acquisition is definitely one of the eligible activities. So go to our website, housing.com, uh, I'm sorry, housing.hawaiicounty.gov. Um, again, housing.hawaiicounty.gov. And you will be able to find information on the housing production fund there. Um, and of course, Les, please let me know if you need additional information. And I'll make sure that the group um, is noticed when we do go out to RFP. Oops, sorry. Um, the Community Development Division is uh, our division that assists developers in connecting with different resources. Um, we do administer Chapter 11 through this division. Um, the HRS 201H um, program is also administered through this um, division. And uh, we also manage a portfolio of the county's housing assets. So there's about 24 properties, leases that we manage, and we, um, we do site audits annually um, to make sure that these uh, facilities are maintained properly. Um, a newer division that we formalized this past year is the Community Engagement Division. And um, this particular division um, is most notably known, I would say, for the coordination of homeless activities. So this is the, the division that is managing the homeless and housing fund that some of you applied for and was awarded. Um, but we also do the landlord um, tenant mediation program through this division. Uh, if you remember the emergency rent program, which we're gonna see round two of that coming through this next fiscal year. Um, Home Ownership Assistance Fund, which is a mortgage program. Uh, round two is coming through this fiscal year as well. Uh, the Residential Repair Program. 
Um, and then there's our administrative um, division that supports the rest of the organization. Um, back in early 2021, when we first came, this, uh, this administration first came on board, we developed a strategic roadmap for housing development. Um, and I'm gonna just quickly run through those five major strategies right now. Um, so the first strategy is a comprehensive review and update of chapter 11. Um, chapter 11 is a inclusionary zoning policy, which means it's a, it's a market-based policy that requires developers who are doing market projects to set aside a percentage of their market project for affordable. So that was the county's way to ensure that affordable housing was getting developed even in these market projects. The problem that we've been seeing with this is that there's very, very little market activity going on. So, you know, while the county has a provision for 20% of any market project to be affordable, 20% of zero is zero, right? So it's not working. Um, and it has been about 35 years since chapter 11 has been looked at. So um, my staff and I are really intensely looking at the revision of this. And, um, you know, the other huge consideration based on some of the studies that we've been seeing is to really try and focus on doing a more incentive-based policy rather than a mandate, uh, trying to remove some of the regulations that we all keep hearing about. Um, strategy two. This is really a focus of the planning department, but it is a comprehensive review of the zoning code, chapter 25, and the subdivision code for chapter 23. The considerations like ADUs are gonna be happening within this comprehensive review. Strategy three, the establishment of an affordable housing fund. You can see with the housing production fund, the homelessness fund, we have accomplished this particular strategy. Um, strategy four is the use of county and state-owned lands for affordable housing development. I do uh, plan to kind of focus in on this particular strategy in this presentation because I want to show you some of the projects that are coming down the pipeline and the number of units that we have planned. Um, strategy five, the development uh, of an expedited planning and permitting process for affordable housing projects. Um, so we, we actually have uh, drafted such a process, which for affordable housing projects includes some work within the housing office. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coordination, I would say, between OHCD and public works. So we actually have a couple of projects right now that we are um, kind of piloting through this process. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so hopefully, with any affordable housing projects, we can move that through the system fairly quickly. What's in the pipeline? So when we took office in December, 2020, there were about a thousand, uh, maybe 1200 affordable housing units in the pipeline. And today with the work that we've been doing through some of the strategic planning and our partnerships, we are now seeing about 5,700 units in the pipeline. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, the Hawaii Housing Planning Study, which is a five-year study, uh, indicates that in order for Hawaii County to meet its housing needs, we have to have 10,000 units in the market affordable, right? So this is from 30% to 140% AMI by the year 2024. We are very far from this number. Um, but we're making progress, um, you know, so the increase in these housing units in the pipeline um, is a positive step forward, I would say. So this chart here kind of shows you where the 10,000 unit line is that we need to produce it by 2024 and where we're at currently. Um, so here, I want to share with you some projects that we're seeing in the in the pipeline. Um, but this particular slide and the next couple of slides will show you what was completed in 2022. Um, 
So Kaya'ulu or Waikaloa in Waikaloa Village, there were 60 units that came online at the end of last year. Um, and the slide kind of shows you 30 to 60% AMI, the bedroom mix, it's, it's a family rental project and the funding stream. And it also gives you the developer information. I'm gonna kind of move through these slides fairly quickly. Papaloa Elderly was also finished last year. It's a county project that used to have 10 units. It now has 20 units. Um, so HICDC did an awesome job with this particular project. Villages of Laiopua is a project in Kailua Kona. It's, it's phased, and I believe they are currently moving into their third phase. But last year, they completed their first phase of 32 single-family homes. Private development. So this is what we're going to see coming in the pipeline this year, coming online this year. So they're gonna start construction. Um, there are a couple of projects in here that we are actually anticipating to finish this year. And this is one of them. So this is Hope Services Sacred Heart Project, 12 units in Pahoa. Um, this particular one, we're expecting them to finish this year. This is a new one that's gonna start this year, Ho'omalu at Waikoloa, 229 units. This is by the uh, by the Queen's Court shopping area on the Makai side. Stanford Carr is doing this project. Kaloko Heights, this project. This project has probably been in the pipeline for about 15 or 16 years. So we are super excited to see this thing kicking off, but we're gonna be seeing 99 units um, in the Kona area, right off of Hinalani Street actually. Um, and this one's being done by HICDC. Waikoloa family, uh, this is located um, right Makai of the Waikoloa village area, 110 apartments, 30 to 60% AMI family rentals. I actually saw the uh, wait list for this one and it may have already closed. So they're getting ready to finish up soon. Kaya'ulu or Kapiolani, this one's going to be in Hilo, right across from the police station. 64 apartments, rentals, 60% um, AMI. Haleola or Moho'uli is a mixed um, project for, uh, it's going to have um, multifamily rentals and senior rentals, uh, 90 units off of uh, Moho'uli Street. Hale Nakoa o Hanaka'i, uh, this particular project has already started. Uh, this is the one that's located right across the street from Waikia High School. This one too, this one's been in the pipeline for about close to 16 years, I believe. Um, so, so what I'm pointing out here and I spoke to you about earlier is strategy number four that I talked about earlier, which is the use of county and state owned lands. I wanted to review some of those projects coming down because those are projects that the county is actually working on. The others that I just shared with you are more private developer type um, projects. And these numbers that you see here are the anticipated housing units that we will see um, or we're anticipating to see at full build out. Uh, let's see. So this one is, oh, not a second. This is the old um, Memorial Hospital. Um, hold on a second. Okay, state owned parcels. Sorry, I'm getting confused. State owned parcels. Old Memorial Hospital, here we go. Um, Hope Services and uh, BISAC are currently leasing space here, um, but BISAC hasn't actually been able to move in because of the condition of the building. Um, so we have already hired consultants and we are moving forward with a environmental assessment. Um, this past year, I was able to secure with uh, the help of Senator Schatz and Senator Hirono, $13 million to do the renovations of this building. Um, so we are gonna start with replacing the roof and removing hazardous material. And then the second phase will be to do the interior 
all of the uh, fire alarms, sprinklers, elevators, um, plumbing, electrical, and all of that. Kukui Ola is a similar type service uh, project for um, homeless individuals. And this one's located across from the West Hawaii Civic Center in Kona. Um, the county was also able to secure uh, congressional earmark funds from Senator Schatz and Senator Hirono last year for Kukui Ola in the amount of $10 million, in addition to state funding of $4 million and, um, and some county funds. So we are currently underway. If you drive by there, you'll see all kinds of activity going on. Um, we have a contractor out there who is doing mass grading um, and paving the way for a, a, a road that's going to get paved before the end of the year. Pretty exciting. Um, oh, going back to um, Kukui Ola. So at full build out, we'll see 64 units there, 16 emergency and 48 permanent supportive housing units. Uh, this parcel here is uh, located on Ainoola and Hai Hai Street. Uh, we just recently received an executive order from the governor um, awarding this particular parcel to the County of Hawaii. Uh, we are anticipating to have about 250 units at this site. Um, our plan is to um, make sure that all of the uh, zoning um, entitlement uh, issues are taken care of and making sure that there is infrastructure accessible to the project. And then we'll go out to RFP, a developer, to help us build out this project. Um, this is another one that we recently received from the state um, through an executive order. Um, and this one's right across the street from the Muni Golf Course, uh, kind of behind um, the new fire station. And um, we're estimating to see about 87 units here and uh, county plans to do the same before we go out to hire a consultant, I mean, a, um, a developer to help us build out this project. This next couple of slides I'm gonna show you are county owned parcels that we are currently working on. And at full build out, we're anticipating about 938 parcels. So this particular one is um, actually has been in our pipeline for quite a few years. Uh, it is Kamakua Nui. Um, when we came on board, you know, the master plan that was originally done on this project was probably about 15 years old. So we updated the master plan, um, finished our environmental assessment. We have the Army Corps of Engineers currently working to clear this property of um, unexploded or ordinances, it is located in, in the FUDS area, the formerly used defense site. Um, so we're gonna get that secured. And um, this year, our focus is to install the mini loop road, the interior road that you see there. Um, and again, securing infrastructure that's needed before we go out to, to um, partner with developers to build out this project. Hale Makoa is a parcel that is located within the Kamakoa Nui area. And we RFP this particular project out in early, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, when was it? In 2022. Um, I know that they are working to secure financing. Um, so we're all hoping that that works out and we'll see 140 apartments there um, very shortly. This is also a county owned parcel in Hilo, right off of Inaco Avenue. Um, you can kind of see where it's located across from the Hilo Medical Center. Um, working on a conceptual plan right now, but it's estimated to um, produce about 100 single family units there. Uh, this parcel is located out in the um, Okala area. We're, we're looking at about 30 parcels, uh, 30 homes um, when we're finished there. And this last slide talks about um, homelessness. 
which you are all very familiar with. I know that a lot of you, I see the faces around the room, have participated in a lot of our activities. So I thank you all very much for supporting us. But so you all know that through Ordinance 2226, the, the County Council appropriated funding for homelessness to address homelessness for the next five years. Um, with your participation, we have put together a strategic roadmap. We have gone out to RFP and made awards to 13 uh, vendors uh, for a total of $7.5 million. Um, it was so, you know, we, we, this was the first year that we went out with a, with a pot of money like this, uh, never before has the county ever had funding like this. Um, but we received 30 applications for a total of $25 million. Um, so it, 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 it wasn't an easy task, um, but ranking and rating and reading through all of the applications produced 13 nonprofits and award of $7.5 million. So just to give you all a timeline, um, I know you will probably be seeing contracts from us by the end of this week. Um, once you all re get a chance to review it and sign it and get back to us, we're hoping to have it executed by the first week in May. That's kind of our timeline for this, this round of funding. And then we'll probably go out to RFP, the 23-24 um, uh, um, uh, fiscal year funding uh, by the end of July. We'll have the next round of uh, RFP out. So I'm sure you'll hear notices and um, ask for your participation in those, those meetings. This is also Fair Housing Month. Um, so I wanted to, to, to put this slide in there. Um, I'm sure you are all aware. So the County of Hawaii, the Office of Housing is participating and conducting these virtual seminars. Um, I wanna ask that you all uh, join in to participate. These dates are the dates of the upcoming webinars. Use the QR code to access information. Um, we would we would love your for your participation and to see you there. So I want to thank you very much, um, Les, for allowing me to speak to this group. Um, do you have any questions? I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Anybody with questions? Okay. okay. No so one. again, please, um, please visit the website. It's 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 packed full of information with all of the different programs that we run, and particularly information on these two uh, funding streams that I talked about today. So, thank you, Les. Thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate. Um, Liam, you had something you wanted to ask? Yeah, I just had one quick question, and okay. this is uh, in, in the spirit of. Uh, of um, the governor's office on housing has talked about um, the need to create what they call deeply affordable housing, um, which is, you know, for folks that, quite frankly, uh, are um, chronically homeless but, um, with with the cofactors of mental health and or substance abuse issues, um, where um, even even kind of uh, what are considered nominal discounted rents are still still unachievable. Um, where do you see deeply, deeply affordable housing fitting into this plan? Yeah, so the two projects that I wanna point out to you, and it's it, it really is a challenge, Liam, I tell you, because being able to produce housing across the gamut is, um, is challenging. You know, it's being able to provide funding streams for the different um, income levels and bringing developers to the table because the county is not a developer, right? So I have to make sure while I'm providing these resources, whether if it's funding or land or things like that, I have to be able to partner and bring people to the table to do the work. But anyway, the two projects that hit that uh, area that you were talking about was the Kukui Ola in Kona, because we are gonna be doing some emergency housing units and then on the second phase, doing 48 permanent supportive housing units on the back end. Um, so that's one particular project. And the project also is designed to have a community center, 
a health center. So we want to be able to provide the facility for the necessary um, services to be provided to that community. Um, the Hilo Hospital is the other. And so you notice that those were the two projects that I had actually received earmark funds from Senator Schatz and Senator Hirono. Um, but the Hilo Hospital is currently being used by Hope Services to do emergency and some permanent supportive housing. Um, but it's it's our thought that once we can get that building um, to code, uh, BISEC will come in and be able to utilize the, the building um, with the lease that they currently hold. But there's also space for more um, vendors to come in. What we are also doing with our um, consultant is looking at the 20 acres that's surrounding this building. Because this building sits on, well, it actually sits on about 24 acres. So the front portion of the property where the building is, is about four or five acres. But the remaining parcel is what we're looking at to do other types of facility for more services or permanent housing, one or the other. Um, also, I want to point out that a lot of the projects that I was sharing with you, when they're talking about 30% AMI, they're talking about very deeply low end. So a lot of these projects come with subsidies for rent. Um, but I'll also share with you, right, that the Office of Housing is running all of these subsidy programs like the Emergency Housing Voucher Program. And that's specifically meant for homeless individuals. Um, so there's a lot of resources and a lot of programs. Um, you know, what's interesting is that I've been doing a circuit of community meetings uh, recently. And what I'm starting to hear, because most of the most of the housing projects that we currently have are all 60% AMI and below. And what I'm starting to hear from the community is what about workforce? You know, there's not enough housing for teachers, right? For, for our healthcare providers, for the police, for the, you know, our workforce. So I'm, I'm having to consider not only what you're asking me to make sure that we continue to produce housing for this, the lower income individuals, but I gotta keep an eye on what we're doing for our workforce as well. So it really is housing for all across the gamut. Um, very challenging. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you for that response. I think that's great. I, I agree. Um, that's that tricky, tricky thing. If you make $70,000 a year, but your rent is $3,500 a month, uh, how do you make that work? So yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's a whole spectrum. And thank you for summarizing those and looking forward to engaging more on it at the forum and at the end of May, the Justice Involved Homeless Intergovernmental Forum. Thank you, Leo. Thank you so much, Susan. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Susan, and all of our guests. Uh, it's great to see everyone, um, and we look forward to continue to, to, to participate together and work together um, with not just the county here and county of Hawaii, but really we have partners from across the state that attend every month, uh, and even from the continent uh, like Dan uh, and others. So uh, again, thank you everyone for attending. Um, if there are any announcements, uh, if not,